Thank you for being here uh, as we uh, present uh, the footsteps of Jesus. And um, we're going to be talking about our upcoming uh, journey to Israel in November of 2019. And uh, be sharing with you our experiences and Dr. Smith's experiences in, in journeying to Israel and following and walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And that uh, we as a fellowship and an organization uh, can begin one of the greatest blessings that you can be to Israel. How many of you desire to be a blessing to Israel? Amen. Yeah. And you know, the Bible teaches us that the nation that blesses Israel is blessed. So the people that bless Israel are blessed. And I, out of the mouth of, of many uh, Israelis that I have spoken to personally myself, they have said to me, the greatest, one of the greatest blessings that you can be to us as a nation is to bring people to our country, to bring people to Israel, to bring groups, to uh, engage in pilgrimages to, to Israel, to the land of Israel. Um, that's their number one source of revenue. Uh, that's their, their bread and their butter. And uh, so when you think about it, every person that invests in going to Israel is blessing Israel. And uh, the nation and the people that bless Israel are going to be blessed. So already there's a commanded blessing <laughs> upon a journey to Israel. Uh, so um, it's, it's inevitable that every time that we go that uh, we're sowing. And have you know, when you sow, you reap. That's the unchangeable law of God's Word. Uh, I'd like to direct your attention to a passage of Scripture in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 21. And, um, and, and it says, And say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone and whether they gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. Bring them into their own land. This is the land of God's people. This is the land of Israel. This, God has de declared that he would bring them. And so we've been seeing this uh, continued pilgrimage of, of Jews from all over the world coming back to their own land. And uh, we get the privilege and opportunity to be able to experience that, to be able to uh, connect, to be able to rub shoulders with the, the Jewish people and, and to engage in that culture and uh, it's just an incredible uh, experience. Uh, it's the greatest journey of my life. It's the number one destination of all of my travels. Uh, my, my, my favorite is the land of Israel. And so I just wanted to introduce why we're here and what this is all about. And um, we're going to be sharing with you some information. Dr. Schmidt has been multiple times to Israel. So... Share with us uh, some of your thoughts. Sure, thank you, uh, Dr. Holder. We were recently on a trip together this last year. I have the, the privilege of, of going on average twice a year to Israel. And started in uh, 1971 was my first trip to Israel. And I've been going twice a year. No matter, Pastor Steve, and I know that you know this, no matter how frequently you go, whenever you, whenever you return, there's always a new blessing. Uh, because the word says that if, if people do not cry out my blessings and acknowledge me, I will have the rocks cry out. Amen. Well, that's what's happening constantly. <coughs> the, the rocks of, of uh, God's land are constantly opening up new vistas of verification that this is truly his land. And so archaeological discoveries are in the making constantly. Uh, and that's why it's so fresh. When you go over there, you will find, as you ultimately approach Jerusalem, and as we ascend to Jerusalem, the 3,800 feet above sea level there, and you'll see the, the, the likeness and the whiteness because all of the stone, all the buildings of Jerusalem, are fairly mandated to a, a, a look alike, other than the other metro areas of Haifa and Tel Aviv. And it's just like it would have been in one sense when the early 
Old Testament pilgrim would have come up to Jerusalem uh, because it just glistens in the sun. And there's something about our bus driver and our bus and our guide as we ride up to Jerusalem and they play that song, mm -hmm. The Holy City. Mm -hmm. uh, you, there's a sense of anticipation and excitement. And then I can tell you as we begin to talk about our journey, uh, you know, the apex of everything there is to be in Jerusalem and we're there for four nights. But if there's ever a place where you can say, I feel God, I sense God, yes. it's when you arrive in Jerusalem. In fact, one of our students at our college, Christian Life College, Brent is here with us today. And Brent was on a trip with us last year. Can, could you not say that when you're in Jerusalem, it's like, it's like, we're there, right? We're there. And we may have him make a comment or two as well. So, Pastor Steve, I, if I can just kind of do a little bit of a broad overview for just a moment. Absolutely. Uh, our journey will begin, for those of you that would, uh, and what we'll be doing a, a handout in a few minutes, will begin the, the first week of November, November 4th. Uh, it's one of my preferred times to travel to Israel because it's, uh, it's a relatively a dry season. It's not the winter rainy seasons that pick up in December, January, February, the first part of March. And uh, so it's a good time. The, the temperatures are also fairly, quote, moderate, particularly moderate uh, when we think about where we're at these last <laughs> few days. It's, it's moderate. You're talking about the mid-70s to maybe the low 80s. It's just a good time. And uh, we, will, we will embark our journey uh, from New York, and uh, we will be flying together on the Israeli Airlines El Al. And it's a great experience in itself, because you, it's the safest airline in the world, yeah. and you begin to experience uh, faith as you travel, because at different periods of the night as we fly, and we fly overnight, so, We'll all rendezvous in New York, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. We'll rendezvous there. We'll all be on the same plane. Uh, we, we leave at night, and we arrive then uh, late the next day, but we, we all can, quote, sleep overnight. Uh, those of you that really know how to sleep overnight on a plane. Uh, but during the night, you'll see uh, Hasidic Jews and Orthodox Jews getting up, and they will have their times of prayer and they will adorn themselves in their, in their historic customs and so forth. And so even as we go there, you're experiencing faith being expressed. And when we arrive there about four o'clock in the afternoon, we'll be met directly by our representative. We are, we are immediately taken care of by our representative and our guide and they walk us through and travel with us throughout the entire time. Broadly speaking, again, let me just mention to you that uh, we will spend seven nights there, set eight days and seven full nights. A lot of tours are about six nights, but we average seven nights. And as Pastor Steve will tell you some more in a moment, we'll kind of play this back and forth a little bit. We'll, we'll go north first uh, because we've, we've, we have done this a few times. And what, we, what we've discovered that why not try to uh, walk into walk in the footsteps of faith. Now, often people refer to the footsteps of Christ. I refer to it as footsteps of faith because faith really begins with the days of Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, whether it's the footsteps of Christ or uh, or or, uh, uh, or that of Abraham, you will have an opportunity of uh, of uh, we'll go first up to Galilee because that's where that early ministry of Jesus was. And we'll spend three full days up there. Then we'll move into Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're going to be down there, basing ourselves in Jerusalem for four nights, but then going south of Jerusalem into some exciting things. So I'll pause, come back to Pastor Steve, and then we'll come back and forth on that. Yes, uh, arriving in, in the Galilee area, uh, it's very peaceful. It's, 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 you know, you just really feel the presence of God there. While we're in, in the Galilee area, we have the privilege of visiting the Beatitudes, uh, the Mount of Beatitudes. We have the, the privilege of going up to uh, the uh, area where Caesarea Philippi, uh, where
where Jesus sat down with his disciples and he looked up at the temple pan and he said, uh, who do men say that I am? And, uh, and then, of course, Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. We get to sit right where the disciples sat and where Jesus had that conversation and where he looked at them and said, uh, when Peter said, thou art the Christ, Jesus said, upon this rock, mm -hmm. upon this confession of faith, I'm going to build my church. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're here, right? <laughs> I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You will come into a completely total new revelation of what that means <clears throat> when you sit at the foothills of that, that mountain, the Temple Pan, and you sit at the springs there and you experience what the disciples would have experienced with Jesus when he said those words. When you stand up to preach Matthew 16, 18, it will have a brand new meaning for you. Uh, we have the privilege in the Galilee area to ride on what is called a Jesus boat. Uh, several years ago, they, they discovered during a drought, very miraculously, during a drought there in Israel, when the waters had receded on the, on the Galilee, they discovered a, a, a boat that dates back all the way to the days of Jesus. Wow. They unearthed it. They have placed it in a uh, climate-controlled environment, and it is still fully intact. Wow. Uh, it, is, it may be the very boat. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just that authentic. It's that genuine. And, uh, but we'll have the opportunity to ride on the Galilee, uh, where Peter walked on the water, we we'll, we have the privilege of. We're doing willing to it. have them try that as well. Yes, right? have yes. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yes, we we yes. Uh, we'll get to have a great dinner with this past trip we had in, in March. We uh, ate overlooking the Galilee. We had Peter's fish while while we were actually the the restaurant that we were eating in actually uh, jets out over the Galilee. It was incredible. Uh, while we're in the Galilee area, we'll have the privilege of visiting one of, I know, Harry's favorites. You, I, I might let you talk about Magda. <laughs> well, thank you. And when he talks about the Galilee, we're actually going to be staying overnight at the Galilee. Yeah. So we'll be at uh, one of the Israeli kibbutz where they have so many of these wonderful, beautiful farms. The, the produce and the kinds of things that we're going to be eating there. When, when you're talking about those large grapes in the Old Testament, now they don't have grapes as big as they did in Joshua's time, but give them another few years, they probably will. <laughs> but the food is excellent. But we'll be actually staying on a kibbutz in a beautiful hotel that sits right on the Galilee. So in the morning, if you want to, you can get up a little bit early and you can have your prayer time, your, your sing-along with your soul and the Lord right there on the Galilee. It's so peaceful and quiet. Mm. You just understand why Jesus spent so much time there and why he knew that it was important for his disciples to take one of those little boats that Steve was talking about to go on the other side. Yes, and, and talk about that, Brother Steve. When, when I first saw the Jesus boat that you've often seen, I'm thinking, wow, no, no wonder that they've often got scared because those, those things are... You, you, you get a picture of a boat on the Galilee. Mm. We've kind of got that Americanized boat, you know, like the, 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 you know, the Royal Caribbean cruise line kind of, <laughs> but, but, you know, I mean to tell you, you're thinking, whoa, this, this is small, but we'll be staying right there, right there on the Galilee. And, and one of the things that we're going to be doing as well, of course, as we're going north, as Steve said, uh, we will also be going to the Golan. Mm. And we'll be going up to the Golan Heights and we're going to have seasons of prayer as we actually uh, look into Syria and we are going to be praying uh, God's purposes and intentions Amen. to the land of Syria. And then we'll be pausing and going, of course, to the border by Lebanon and we will be doing the same thing. So that we will have our prayer vigils and our moments of praying uh, for the movements of God on Lebanon and also Syria and uh, wow and while we're in that region one of the one of the most recent archaeological finds was done by a, a faith group uh, a wonderful uh, Catholic group from Mexico that I think is 
highly influenced with an evangelical charismatic kind of a flavor to it. Wow. Uh, they were they were they were developing a retreat house, and they come as they were digging down along the Galilee. They discovered uh, uh, an ancient fishing village that that is uh, just very. It was the it was the place of Mary Magdalene, and it was a fishing village where everyone in the area, all the everyone says Jesus would have spent a lot of time coming in and out of that. And it's one of the one of the best kept archaeological finds. In fact, it is it is the hot spot in Israel right now. And 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 Pastor, tell them what what they discovered. What what was the key thing that they discovered there? They discovered an actual uh, what would have been a box that would have been used by Jesus in the a first century synagogue, and they have actually unearthed the first century synagogue wow. right there. It would have been possibly where Jesus would have entered into that, entered in, and where he would have taught from, where he was spoken, where he would have shared. Uh, it, it and, and they have the actual the, the stone table, the stone table right where, there, where the scrolls would have been opened up, and laid there for. for it, it is, yeah, yeah. It it there it's it is my hot spot, right? It's my sweet spot there. You don't want to leave there. Oh no, and 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 and. They, they, they are experiencing healings in that, in that area. I mean, right there, uh, they're, they're phenomenal divine healings have been taking place. Well, if, and if you really want to kind of get a flavor of the moment while we're up there on the, on the north, we want to make sure we tell them about Nazareth Village. Yes. Right? Uh, I mean, we're not talking about just going into the, to the boyhood area where Jesus, of course, was. Uh, but they actually have... Uh, a place now called Nazareth Village. I'll tag onto that, but tell them that because that'll be a hands-on, wonderful visual reinforcement. Uh, Nazareth Village is a uh, first century reenactment or, or pre-first century reenactment of what would have gone on in the life of Nazareth. Uh, you, you get to see firsthand uh, how uh, carpentry would have taken place, which of course was the, you know, the, the trade of Jesus. Uh, you would you would see firsthand how uh, shepherding took place. Uh, you get to see uh, going through the homes there. Uh, you will also get to visit a once again a replica of a uh, synagogue, uh, all within uh, just uh, walking distance. Just sharing. You're on the hillside. It, it is in the middle of the, of Nazareth, but it's it's almost like. Uh, a complete, you know, set on a, a movie theater or something of that nature. That, it, it, but it's all natural. It's all real. It's all genuine. And what makes it so real is that the open field that we're going to be walking in uh, it is is basically uh, intact from uh, mm -hmm. over two thousand years ago. It was like the the it was like God had protected this acreage where where the the, the children of Nazareth would have been running in and out of. And they actually have the verified, archaeological verified uh, 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 watchtower that, that <coughs> is talked about in the Bible. And they have a watchtower, a stone watchtower, that dates back to that era. But the most exciting part, of course, is the wine press that was there. Yep. And the Jewish uh, 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 Museum of, of uh, History verifies that that dates back to the time of Christ. And... You're going to want to be there to see that and the olive trees because what they tell us there, we project forward then as we're going into the Garden of Gethsemane mm -hmm. and how they describe how the actual olive presses work. Right. You'll be able to carry that with you then when you go to Gethsemane and you say, ah, exactly. now this, this makes, wow. It's like a new spiritual light bulb comes on, right? Yes, so, sir. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. So. And Harry, while, while we're in the Galilee, we sure. also have the, the opportunity to visit Capernaum, which was the wow. headquarters of the ministry of Jesus. Yep. We'll go to the, uh, the discovery of a synagogue there and, and also of the housing of which uh, the man, the roof was taken off and the paralyzed man was lowered and, and Jesus brought you know, a miracle there. We'll get to visit that site. We'll visit also Peter's uh, mother-in-law's home and her house. One of, the, one of the biggest houses of the time, I'd yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. So all of that's there in the, in the Galilee area. 
And um, I, I'm not sure exactly where we're going to do the baptismal yet, but there is a baptismal site there. Yes, we'll, we'll probably do the baptism in, our, in Ardent, where we, in Ardent, where we normally do. And so there will be an opportunity for you to reaffirm your baptism or celebrate the baptism in the Jordan. In the Jordan. It's, it's, quite, it's quite, uh, quite, a, quite a good moment. We, of course, will uh, also be going to Megiddo uh, as we're up north. And you're going to be able to look out over the plains of Megiddo and see the, the futuristic Battle of Armageddon. And you, you kind of think, how can the armies of the world really amass there? Is it really big enough for all the armies? Well, when you see it, you understand it. It's like, all right, this is where the action's going to be. It is quite something. And then for you guys, who gals who really like fresh water and and, and you just want that kind of a good moment. We'll take you to the place where the springs, where Gideon uh, had everybody lap water <clears throat> like a dog. Uh, and you can, get, you, you can get down, right Brent? You can get down as low as you want and those springs are still there. So it's something to be able to, to just imagine uh, Gideon's 30,000 plus being whittled down to finally, what was it, what's the number? 300, right? 300. And, and it all took place, and we're standing right there. It's right there. Nothing make-believe about it. It's fantastic. You, you'll, you'll love those moments up on the north, but that's not all. Go ahead. From there, we get to uh, look at the Valley of Jezreel. Yep. Um, I'll never forget, uh, my first trip to Israel was in 1997, and um, I, I noticed that an, an, an Israeli jet, um, and it seemed like it yeah, I, I, honestly, it seemed like it came from nowhere, <laughs> out of nowhere. And um, I, I did some research, and I found out that in the Valley of Jezreel, there is an Israeli Air Force base underground. Underground. And so here comes this plane out, out of nowhere, literally. And uh, so you get to look over the Valley of Jezreel. Uh, it, it, it's an incredible experience. Uh, uh, you know, there's there's opportunities as well sometimes to run into Israeli soldiers, uh, and usually, you know, if they're not in some kind of you know um, intense moment, they're they're you're able to take a picture with them or, or you know greet them or say hello to them. Um, it, that that part of it is is an experience as well. We'll be seeing one of the capital cities of Decapolis, those ten major cities called the the Deca or the Decapolis. And so we'll be going to Bet Shean. It was a place that probably Jesus uh, skirted and probably uh, there's no mention that he ever entered there. But what was important, of course, was that Saul's head uh, that he unfortunately lost. Uh, uh, the enemies of Israel, they mounted his head there on the walls of Bet Shean. And if you want to, and there's always somebody that will do it. You'll do it, you'll do it, he did it, Brent did it. And you'll climb all the way to the top. They'll run all the way up to the top of the hill. And those that have any sense will just say, all right, good, nice, good, have, have, have your moment. But anyway, but uh, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal site. One of the best Roman era cities that was ever unearthed. And talk about that then. We'll go to the Mediterranean uh, and spend a few hours there and, and, and go to Caesarea, mm -hmm. uh, the city that was built by, by Herod. But all of those first three days uh, begin then to move following the footsteps of Christ as he then uh, moves further, of course, on his journey uh, to Jerusalem. And uh, that becomes really quite an experience, a spiritual moment for us. It does. It? Yeah. The Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Amen. And um, when you get to Jerusalem, <laughs> it, it's the most incredible city in the world. And you have the merging of all these religions. Uh, you, you certainly feel the uh, intensity of, of what Jesus would have felt uh, in coming into a city like that with the hustle, the bustle, the activity. Um, in, in Jerusalem, when we arrived, uh, we had the privilege uh, on two different occasions of being there at the beginning of Shabbat yes. on Friday evening Woo! and visiting the Western Wall. Wow. And the Wailing Wall. And going up and praying uh, at, at the wall. And engaging with the culture. Engaging with the various celebrations. And you will see young people uh, 
just gathered together, uh, just singing, and, and it, it almost sounds like a Pentecostal revival. Ooh, it does. Because they begin to pray, and, and they begin to, and it's, it's, a, it's a tongue almost, uh, like they're in, praying in tongues. And uh, uh, it's just a, a great celebration, great moment. Uh, there'll be there's thousands of people in that, Absolutely. In that area there uh, next to the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. And, uh, and then one of the highlights is to be able to go through the tunnels that are now open, that have been unearthed uh, below the Muslim quarter. You can walk all the way along the, the, the Western Wall, along the wall of, uh, there of Jerusalem, and you can experience and you can feel uh, and even walk and see some of the streets that would have been in place in the first century that Jesus would have walked along. And so uh, it, Jerusalem is, is an incredible city, and be able to look over it from the Mount of Olives where Jesus ascended yeah. and look uh, you know, into the city and uh, the Eastern Gate and um, all of the, everything is just incredible and the, the Garden of Gethsemane is there. You get to experience some of the seedlings, the root offsprings uh, of where Jesus would have prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. These trees are, are now mature and standing, but they would have come from the very uh, roots, the very offsprings of those olive trees there in Gethsemane. You get to experience all of that. Uh, his arrest, taking him um, to uh, Caiaphas's house and, and uh, where Peter denied him. And you get to go into the dungeon where Jesus would have been held the night of execution. Uh, yeah. it, 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 you get to experience walking down where they would have the triumphal entry. We get to walk, we get to take that uh, triumphal entry walk all the way down and where they would have shouted, uh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. We were, weren't we doing that with you when you came down? Didn't we say, no, uh, no. hallelujah, no. Mr. President, hallelujah. No, oh, oh, no, that wasn't you. No. Oh, sorry. Oh, that was another. We were trying to stay ahead of the guy that was selling all oh, of yeah, the yeah. shawls out Five of the back of his yeah, car. Ten shawls for ten dollars. Ten shawls for ten dollars. I think his relatives were there. On that side. That they were probably the shawls that Jesus yeah. probably stepped on. Yeah. You, you will find that when we are at the Wailing Wall and you stand at the wall, there rarely have I had a moment where I actually didn't feel like my knees were buckling mm -hmm. under, for me, the anointing of the Lord. The opportunity to pray there mm -hmm. uh, and the intensity. You know, when you think about thousands of years of people there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, it's like, as God talks about the, the, the bottle in heaven where our tears are being captured. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like all these prayers by hundreds and thousands and millions of people all kind of compressed into that area. And then you take that and then you go into the Garden of Gethsemane and we spend about 20 minutes to 30 minutes after we have our devotional time, which we have that just every day. Every day we're having moments of spiritual engagement. The songs of the Lord that will lift up the prayer times, the readings. When we get into Gethsemane and we allow people just to walk and have their prominence. I know Brent had a very significant moment there. Uh, you just have your own personal moment of engagement with the Lord there. Uh, and we will, we will spend quality, quality time there. Uh, but, but it doesn't end there because we go south too. Yes, we yeah. do. Tell them what happens on the south. Uh, we, get, we get to go to uh, visit the Dead Sea. Uh, you actually have the opportunity to uh, swim in the Dead Sea. Um, it, it's an incredible experience. For those of you who can't swim, you will be able to swim. Okay. <laughs> well, if you call that you don't swimming, swim. <laughs> <laughs> floating, or uh, yeah. and then we visit the um, the you forgot the synchronized swimming. Yeah, the synchronized. The synchronized. Uh, the synchronized. Uh, yeah, right. like like what you did on our last trip. This guy's out there with synchronized well, swimming. With that guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> We also get to visit. It was visit a beautiful moment. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very well, the highlights of my life. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, also get to visit Masada, uh, which is the refuge of which the Jews retreated to when uh, Jerusalem was being destroyed, and uh, uh, the, where these Jews, uh, rather than be captured by the Romans, uh, they decided that they would uh, take their own lives rather than to submit to the slavery and to the, uh, you know, the mastery of, of the Roman Empire. 
and we get to visit and see that experience uh, and incredible you take a uh, trolley all the way to the top of the mountain of Masada and the views are incredible uh, over the you get to overlook the Dead Sea and, and it's just an incredible moment there in the south. We'll have uh, a number of hands-on experiences that a lot of the tours generally do not offer and Pastor Steve, so if it's all right, we'll just keep those as surprises, yeah, right? Uh, oh, but you you will experience some hands-on opportunities that uh, will be memorable. You'll be able to, you know, touch history and be a part of identifying history, and um, you'll be able to uh, understand a little bit better uh, the cultural nuances of Abraham. And uh, but again, we'll leave we'll leave some of that uh, for for you to discover. Uh, we, we start early in the morning. This isn't a vacation. This isn't where you uh, start at 10 o'clock in the morning and you come back to the hotel at 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we, we start after breakfast and we are gone all day long. And we'll be traveling on uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful tour buses. We'll have our own tour bus, our own dedicated driver who will be with us all 24-7. Our guide will be with us 24-7. That'll be our our little caravan that we'll we have, have the, yes we and we have the number one guide yeah in in Israel yes yeah Mark Deckelbaum, Mark Deckelbaum who will be our guide uh, speaks of course fluent English he was born in Canada and and came had his own spiritual journey uh, came over as a pilgrim himself as a Jewish believer and and worked and lived in it uh, began there in uh, 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 one of those kibbutz and then continued his journey on. Well, Pastor Steve, um, I'm sure that we'll, we'll be leading up to some questions on that because I, I know that we have some inquiries. So shall we shall we kind of kind of do a deeper dive on, on some of these things then? So, sure. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, we want to present, uh, we have some brochures we'd like to share with everyone. And uh, um, as, as Harry has said, this will be a, a seven night, eight day. And um, the opportunity is is for all of our fellowship uh, to participate in and be a part of. Of course, you know, there's only so many seats <laughs> that are available, so the earlier that you would uh, make a commitment would be better. And uh, the way it is designed, uh, that is if you reserve your spot now, that uh, it's a down payment of $300, and uh, with 18 months until the trip takes place, you can actually uh, work with the agency and do an installment plan and uh, it'll be paid for the time that you leave. So uh, I'm going to pass these out and uh, Harry, if you want to sure. share anything. Sure. What you will, what Pastor Steve and uh, we have about 50 of those, Pastor Steve. You okay. might want to start one for a couple or whatever. Okay. One for and uh, uh, then you can, Yes. Uh, this, this is all inclusive. The price from New York and return is $3,599, $3,599, all inclusive, which means when we board the plane until we come back, uh, it's an all inclusive situation that includes your round trip airfare on El Al, uh, United 777. So it's, it's one of United's larger uh, Boeing aircrafts and will fly overnight there so that you'll get dinner on board and then you'll get uh, a lunch and breakfast and so forth as well, and our meals on board. Round trip airfare, we're gonna be met by our, our guide at the airport. Uh, it covers porterage fees. In other words, you bring your suitcase to the bus, they load the suitcase. You bring your suitcases off the bus, it's all handled by the hotels. Uh, it covers all of our ground transportation. We have our own dedicated bus, our own dedicated driver. We will be staying uh, three nights at a beautiful hotel property on a kibbutz on the Galilee. <coughs> when you come for breakfast in the morning, the panoramic windows, which are not quite as high as this ceiling, but all of the glass windows, you look out when you're having your cup of coffee for breakfast and your meal, and you're looking right at the, at the Galilee. But that'll include then a full Israeli buffet breakfast, all you can eat in the morning. And you think that our buffets here are, all right, the Hyatt buffet here is nice. Th this buffet is wimpy. Uh, uh, you can't enjoy a buffet until you've been to Israel. Amen. Uh, the fruit and the 
vegetables the and the hummus. Oh, the hummus. 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 It is phenomenal, right? Uh, so a large breakfast in the morning, then we board the buses, and then at night we come back, and then there's an all-you-can-eat dinner buffet. Uh, ad adequate enough that if you care to, you would, even though our lunch we do on our own, most of the time, and we'll stop at different places, and you can get a falafel uh, if you want, but lots of times, a lot of people just, they won't need anything else, but we will stop. Uh, the, uh, it also includes, of course, our lodging up north for three nights down in Jerusalem as well at very beautiful hotels, yes, nice. wonderful hotels. And uh, that, of course, all your taxes and your tip, the gratuities to the drivers and the people doing your rooms and the people who are uh, carrying your luggage, it's all included in that. So it's, it's an all-inclusive price. Now, what we, what we do is allow everyone to gather in New York, but it's up to you to uh, arrange your transportation to New York. And rather than us add those supplemental costs, uh, we stopped doing that several years ago because many people will use air miles, you know, to fly, you know, whether it's on Southwest or whatever. So rather than us tacking on another $350 or whatever, you can, you can get your own best rate that you want to work with. And our travel agent, Madeline Cohen, Val Wholesale Travel, she'll help you. If you want her to make the arrangements, you can. But uh, you can get there and make your own arrangements to arrive there, and that way you can use air miles if you want. So We even had some people this past trip yes. who drove. Yeah, they drove, drove in. That's true. Uh, they, they were within driving distance of New York, and so they drove and parked their vehicles. And, and we, we arrive at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we, we gather our things together. And in about an hour and a half after going through immigration and that, which really goes by rather quickly, uh, we'll be on our way to drive on up to the Galilee. And we'll get there in time for our dinner and for our first night's rest. And then in the morning, we, we start in earnest, generally by 7.30 in the morning. And then we're generally back by 5.30 or 6 at night. And so we we are we have a we have uh, even Mark Deckelbaum says that the tours that we arrange uh, are really extensive. Now, when you do go online and register, you will you will be able to see we have uh, on the website you'll see a day by day itinerary, so that you'll you'll be able to get an idea of um, of what we'll be doing. However, I want to tell you this this is just kind of an overview and an outline. It is far more uh, extensive than this. Pastor Steve, I, I believe it's already posted, correct? Um, yes, you, you can actually, uh, right now, you can take your conference guide. How many, those of you who have the conference guide, access to the conference guide. Uh, and you can click on our, the footsteps of Jesus, uh, um, our uh, presentation right now, our session, and it will link you you can go to the bottom of that and you can link to registration ASAP, I mean, yes. uh, yeah. immediately. Yeah. Or you can go to the fellowshipnetwork.net and you'll see a brief uh, presentation, uh, announcement by what we're doing. And um, you can also register immediately there from the website. Mm -hmm. So it easy. What it will do, it will link you to Bell Wholesale Travel and who is handling our, our journey. And so you can do all that right there online. If you need hard copies uh, as well, we can, we can down, you can download those right. and you can print those out and fill out a hard copy if you choose to do hard copy. But everything is digital or hard copy and you can begin making uh, those res uh, reservations now. Yeah, that first $300 will hold your seat so that then from that point you can kind of just keep making payments and deposits and that. But maybe maybe there are some questions and, yeah. and you'd like us to kind of help clarify anything? Sure. Do yes, you go to Ron. the Cave of Adullam? Sir? The Cave of Adullam or uh, that's Valley in, of Refuge? In, 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 yes, we, yeah, we, 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 we actually do. And we'll go up to the Springs of Engedi mm -hmm. and you're gonna be able to, if you want to, go up into the, yes, go that, ahead. That was one of yeah. my, my favorite hikes. Yes. 
uh, Ooh, is to hike the all the way to all the cave the of Abdulam, hike yeah. up to Engedi. Yeah. And the springs, there's a beautiful spring there that actually, if you'll you know, take your you know, swim shorts or whatever, you can actually get in, in those springs there. And um, awesome. it's, that was one of my favorites. What, what I think is fun is that you see all of these, these Orthodox Jewish young people on their day trips there. Yeah. And of course, they're dressed very modestly as Orthodox uh, youth are. And when they hit those springs, these gals are in their long black uh, dresses and that. They go in yeah. full body clothing. I mean, yeah. they, they just, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's a great spot. That's a great spot. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, that's in the, and that's in the southern. Yes, that's on the southern, southern part. part. Yeah. As we go by the, the, the Qumran caves Qumran where, caves, where yeah. the, uh, uh, the scrolls were discovered. Uh, yes. How many are going on the trip? We, we have, well, we'll have a bus that will has a capacity of 55, 55. Uh, so we can go to the capacity of the bus, and if there were more than that, we can get two buses. Uh, we can get two buses. I have a friend of mine right now uh, who will be going uh, in this October, and they started with a, a 30, and now they have 120. <coughs> so uh, we can have whatever. We can grow as long as, as long as you want. Typically, our tours are around 30 to 35, because if, 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 if it's that number, you got perhaps an extra seat by you. However, uh, we will sell that bus to capacity if, 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 if there's that much interest. question. Is yeah. it possible to meet you in Israel? Yes, it can happen that way as well. Mm -hmm. that, we can do, that, that we can do through, uh, again, Bell Wholesale Travel, where if somebody else perhaps, maybe again, you might want to use air miles on your own, and, and she can work out with uh, Dr. Holder and myself uh, a, a, a land only option, you know, we, we definitely have done that. Absolutely. Absolutely. One, one of the favorite things that, that I, I've enjoyed doing in our trips to Israel that, uh, and that is journaling, uh, taking a journal and journaling your trip and then coming back that evening after dinner and sitting down in a, in a, in a round table or circular uh, in environment in the hotel lobby or somewhere and just talking about your experiences and sharing your experiences one, one of the highlights of, of you know grouping and uh, it just it just makes the experience just that much more uh, enjoyable and, and you get to share what was your highlight of the day and, and you get to journal everything and, and, and document it and then you know, look at it in scripture and, and pray over it. And just It's an incredible spiritual moment. And for all of uh, you who, like myself, are wannabe musicians, vocalists, and we're the wannabe kind that you wish that you could sing, we will all go to a place where everybody, wow. everybody's voice will wow. sound no matter. Wow. <laughs> Pastor Steve will lead us to, by the pool of Bethesda, we'll go into St. Anne's Chapel. And we will form our every our whole tour becomes a choir, mm -hmm. and we will go up to the altar of the church, and Pastor Steve will lead us as a choir. And there isn't anyone in this room whose voice will not sound. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's the it's the best illustration for better together. Yeah, that's right. It really is. Yeah, that's true. I did say I, I never sounded so it's good. It's true. It's right. <laughs> And what's, what happens because while we're there, you'll, you'll have groups coming in from Brazil, groups coming in from China, mm -hmm. groups coming in from South Korea, and, and they're all wanting their moment up there. But what begins to happen is that when there's a strong choir, and we're always a strong choir. Yeah. Two, two trips yeah, ago, yeah, yeah. Two trips yeah. ago, we had this, this Chinese group that were there, and the, the, the director, the leader of the Chinese group, saw what we were doing and she came to me and she said can we join you yeah, yeah, yeah. and so i had all of our group yes. on, on the on the uh stage or on the platform it's not really a stage but and and then all of these chinese <laughs> and i led them all in how great thou art Ooh. and the power of the lord oh, filled that lands. place the presence of god Ooh. filled that place it was an incredible moment, and, and we, we blessed those Chinese. Oh, my goodness. And, yes. and they looked at us and said, we may not see you again, but we'll see you there. Oh, wow. And, and wow. I noticed, I noticed the, what would be, you know, not quite what would be the, uh, the priest, but there was a, the, the, the gentleman who was in charge of that church who was standing on the side. 
and he was just listening and watching us. And I went over to him afterwards and just it shook our hands and tears were coming down his eyes. He said, uh, I'm from Amsterdam. I've been, I was sent here by, by my order, so this is my church. I've been here for a few years. He said, to, he said normally this is considered a shrine, but he said, today you made it truly a church. Wow. And the tears were coming. It was a, it was a, it was a good God moment. So, well, again, any other? Uh, uh, now, listen, uh, Brent, do you want to make a, a brief comment, or and anyone else that was recently with us, any any comment yourself, uh, Brent, on what the trip might have meant to you? Yeah, it's a, it's awesome. You have to go uh, seeing stuff in real life, like you read in the Bible. He's like blows. It blew my mind. Uh, are we, are we, is it uh, the Engev? Is that the? Yes, yeah. So I'd wake up in the morning and I was able to go swimming in the Sea of Galilee where Jesus walked in water. Incredible. Uh, the Garden of Gethsemane was my favorite part of all of it. He's saying, being able to pray where Jesus prayed. And I'm pretty taking it. Was, it was all very incredible. Uh, even history wise, we were able to see like Roman aqueducts. And I just like blew my mind. I've always heard of these, and actually seeing it for real is it's actually incredible. Uh, and yeah, all of it. I had a great time praying the Western Wall was amazing. Just like seeing everybody like calling out. You couldn't hear anybody. <laughs> everybody's like screaming. Yeah. It was it was awesome. The tunnels weren't built for tall people, so that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't as enjoyable for me because they had to duck the whole way through. But, uh, <laughs> And you have a chance to go. This is absolutely incredible. Well, Pastor, tell me about you. Yes. you I mean, Pastor's been through many times, but he was on our most yeah, recent yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and going with Pastor Harry and Pastor Steve is just a real treat, and there's very enjoyable people to hang with. In addition to that, obviously, our life is vested in the Scripture, and, and to get the, the live pictures of the land of Israel, there's no replacement for that. For passionate lovers of Jesus and lovers of the Scripture, it's just... Incredible. And the, and the Old Testament history, I, yes. I absolutely, yeah. that's rich. The other thing is, I mean, obviously that's all extremely meaningful. And, and you know, the trip costs money, right? But it's a, it really is a full meal deal, and it's really awesome that way. In addition to the meaning, though, it's also just a great trip. <laughs> it's, it's very convenient. Things are done for you. The food is...